Hello everybody, um, today I want to show you something I've been using for months and months now and I don't see a lot of people using on the job. It's called CSI or C Sharp Interactive and it's basically a REPL uh, for use with C Sharp. Uh, for me it's a huge productivity boost and I wanted to share this with the world because not a lot of people know about it. Maybe a bit of context first. So what is a REPL? A uh, REPL is an acronym for these four letters or four words, read, eval, print loop. So a REPL is basically a command line uh, interface and it's asking you for input. That's the read step of the read state of the REPL. So you just type in random C sharp code. And then when you hit enter, it will go to the next phase. It's called eval or evaluate. So whatever you type in, it will evaluate that expression, that statement, and then it will, in step three, print the results and loop. It just keeps doing that. So REPL is a read, eval, print loop, and you can use it as an interactive de development environment. I want to say debugging, but it's actually more development. Why would you even consider using a REPL? Well, uh, I use test-driven development and unit tests for my feedback when I'm writing software. But uh, I've noticed, especially when I'm doing functional programming, but lately also in C Sharp, now that I know it exists for C Sharp as well, a REPL is the fastest feedback loop you will ever create when you are writing code. So say you're playing around with the, uh, some writing some business logic, or you're evaluating a new library and you want to see uh, a bit, you want to play around with the API, you could write a, a scratch program or a throwaway program play with it that way you could write unit tests that's also a pretty fast feedback loop or you could open up your REPL and start interactively playing with the code I'm going to show some examples later so don't worry the cool thing about this REPL is it keeps state uh, between evaluations so you enter some code into REPL you hit enter it evaluates it and say you do a variable declaration it maintains the state of, or the value of that variable so you can reference it in later stages I'll show a demo in five minutes. Uh, another huge benefit for, for me for REPLs is it implements some kind of intelligent to string or an intelligent print. Whatever you uh, have, it prints it. So whatever you, uh, your statement you enter evaluates to, it prints the result. And if the result is like a list, usually if you to string a list in Z sharp, you get this, well, it's a type. It's basically the string representation of the type of the list. And it sucks because you have no, uh, need for that you want to see what's in it most of the time the REPL is smart enough to say I have a list of two strings a and b if you if the REPL prints it you will see this exact thing so it will also print the contents if you print out an object like this is like a foo class uh, as a property string uh, name if you create a new object of that class and send it to the REPL it will print it out like this so you really see uh, the entire state of an object and you don't even have to implement to string or start printing it out yourself no you just feed it to the REPL um, mentioned it before C Sharp has a built-in REPL so a REPL built into Visual Studio and it's called CSI not the crime series no it's abbreviation for C Sharp Interactive I'm going to show you a demo real quick quick but there's some shortcuts we're going to go over so we can send code to the REPL say you're editing a C sharp file or you're writing some unit tests and you want to quickly evaluate a piece of code you can select that piece of code hit some shortcuts and BAM it gets evaluated in the REPL you can see the results you can play around with it further you can load DLLs so say you want to learn a new serialization library or a newtonsoft.json you want to play around with it you can just load it up in the REPL and start playing around with the API going to show that as well you can load script files uh, that's a something really interesting I find if you have the, like a, a scripting job most of the time in a .NET environment at least people grab for PowerShell or whatever but you can just as easily write C sharp scripts so it's just a statement of lines of C sharp code and you can load it into the REPL and it will execute it as well so it's a really cool way of writing type safe code C sharp huh? and load and execute scripts like that. It's also very interactive with REPL. And there's some uh, help commands to clear the REPL screen, to reset the state of the REPL, but we'll show that during the demo. 
Cool, let's drop down to the code. Right here we have just, uh, I just opened Visual Studio and I went to the C-sharp interactive window. If you don't have it in your screen, if you just search for, uh, oh, let's go to the quick launch here, search for interactive from Visual Studio 2015 on, it should be there. It should, it's called view other windows C-sharp interactive and then bam, you're in this window. And it's, it's got a prompt. So right here you can write C-sharp code, hit enter, and it will evaluate this. You can do basic math, but you can do all kinds of things like burp. Um, okay, let's let's create a GUID. Sometimes you need like a, a new GUID. You can just do it inside REPL and boom, it prints out the result and you can use this wherever. Cool. Um, let's do start doing some interesting stuff uh, by creating a file. It's just a empty file, let's open it in code for a while. It's an empty file and it has a CSX extension. See, it's empty, it has a line. Uh, let's close it back up. And you can open this in Visual Studio, maybe I should have done that first. Open, uh, where did I put it? On my desktop. Don't mind the clutter, I have a lot of ongoing stuff. There we go, it's the .csx file, so you can open it in Visual Studio and you can start writing random C sharp. For example, uh, my computer is hanging. Okay, let's say uh, first name is uh, John, last name is Snow, and uh, full name is uh, first name space last name there we go and you can load this script into the REPL how do you do that uh, let's go back to the slides you have the bang l or bang load that loads a script file so let's try that bang load and then navigate to the script file it's somewhere on my desktop so this is the exact same script file I can load it like this. Now it uh, is giving me compile errors because I am not typing things correctly. Let's rerun that load. So now it loaded this file. And if there's code in there, network calls, whatever, it will execute this file line by line. Uh, what's more, uh, let's. Uh, it has loaded the script file into the REPL and now it knows about all the variables that you declared in that REPL. So for example, I can use first name in here Oh yeah, that was John, last name. Oh yeah, that was Snow. So this is one way of using REPL. You can write script files, and I was expecting uh, IntelliSense to work. I don't know why it's not working, but never mind. You can write script files and you can execute them without even a compilation step. So this is a real lightweight scripting way. It's type safe because you're just writing C sharp. It's pretty cool. Uh, but that's not how I mainly use C, uh, CS Interactive. I use it while writing code in Visual Studio, like when I'm editing C Sharp files. I'm going to give a little demo now. So, pretend this is a C Sharp file in a project somewhere, and you have a clause over there. Uh, foo is a bad example. What are we going to do today? I'm seeing and looking straight at the dog picture, so let's make a dog class. And the dog will have a name. There we go. And say we want to play around with this dog class a bit. Uh, I'm going to clear the repo really quick. So CLS or clear. Those are two directives or commands you can use to clear the screen again. I'm going to make it. And say I want to play around with this dog class. I want to like try it out, see what I get. It's a really simple example, but bear with me. Oh no, you know what? I'm going to make a, a method in there. Uh, string. Um, what does a dar dog do? Let's 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 make my dog bark, and it will. Let's make this magical thing. Woof! So my dog can bark now. And let's say we want to play around with this. I'm going to make it do something a bit more interesting. I'm going to make it speak. We have a talking dog and it can lot. It knows its name even, so it's a brilliant kind of dog. There we go. 
how can I uh, play around with this in the REPL now? So I have my C sharp file, I have some classes, I want to play around with it. Say I just want to type new dog in here. It does not work, it does not know about, the REPL does not know about dog. But I can just select, or I could load this CSX file as I did in the beginning, or uh, I can just select some random code somewhere in a C sharp file, whatever, and right click, and uh, dun, 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 there's this command called execute in an interactive. If I do this, it just copy paste the code into the REPL, and now my REPL knows about this class. So I can do new dog, works just fine. And I can, well, let's give him a name. Uh, my dog is called Nestor, so I'm going to create my dog. There we go. So you see, it, I input some stuff, it evaluates the statement, and it'll print the result. And without even implementing to string, it's uh, printing out all the properties. So even the automatically getter thing prints it out, but, uh, prints out the name. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can. Uh, assign it to a variable. Nextor, no. Nestor would be better. Uh, let is not spell at C sharp. That's F sharp. There we go. So now we have this variable Nestor in the environment and we can print it. We can uh, update the name. Or let's give it another name. My parents' dog is named Jew. There we go. And if you print out Nestor now, everything is updated. So it's a very interactive way of playing around with a piece of code. And that's basically it. So you can, or yeah, I want to show something else. So now we know about Nestor and we have updated Nestor's name to Zhu. It's all in the current state in the REPL. Say I'm writing some more code here, uh, stuff like that. I can just keep sending stuff to the REPL and it will not forget about Nestor. So for example, uh, let sum no, let random number is 33, and let's send that to the REPL. I'm writing F sharp again, sorry about that. Var random number, there we go. And if I grab back to the REPL and I inspect Nestor, Nestor still exists, Nestor still is Jules, so the REPL maintains state. It's called the environment, but it's basically state maintaining, it maintains state. And that's really cool if you're writing a test or trying down some code and you're experimenting with it in the REPL and then you're writing some more code in your C-sharp file and you're sending it to the REPL again. It's a really uh, short feedback loop. It's a really interactive way of exploring and uh, playing around with code. One of the use cases I wanted to show you is uh, uh, what if your code is using uh, other DLLs or a Nugget package and you want to play around with that in a REPL. So, Let's throw everything away. Let's clear or reset the REPL. And say you want to play or you have some code in your project and it is using newtonsoft.json, so the JSON library to serialize, deserialize objects to JSON. And you've never played around with it and you want like a quick experiment. So uh, normally you would do stuff like using newtonsoft dot json ah, so you have a nugget package in your project or you install a nugget package and then you open up the namespace and you can start writing in it uh, the REPL needs to know about this dll so how do you do that you can do um, i think it's just bang r for reference and then you reference the dll you want to load in the REPL. Uh, it's in the CSI folder. So yeah, now I'm referencing newtonsoft.json.dll, but it can be a DLL of any other Nugget package or even of your own code. Once you built it, you have a DLL, you can load it into the REPL. So now the REPL knows about newtonsoft.json. And uh, let's make a class so we can play around with the Newtonsoft serialize magic. Uh, public class. Should have kept the dog. Wait a second. Let's go back to the dog. Should I have kept the dog? Yeah. So let's send this dog back to the REPL. Now we know about uh, Newtonsoft and about the dog class. We're gonna make Nestor again. Dog is new dog name is Nestor. There we go. So now we have an object. 
Oh, sorry. There we go. We have a dog named Nestor. We have Newton subbed. And do we have Newton subbed? Yes, we do. So we can just do Newton subbed dot JSON. What is this API? I know a bit about it, so I know it's called JSON convert. And you can do serialize object, for example, and you serialize a dog. So what does it look like if you serialize uh, the dog? And you see it's printing out the result. And the result of this is a string because serialization returns a string. So this is what the serialized version of Nestor looks like. It has this magical getter, so I'm not sure what's going to happen if we deserialize. But then again, see, sorry, the, the REPL is really interesting to play around with edge cases like this. So let's try it. Let's try to deserialize an object and let's deserialize it into the dog type and the raw string is the thing it got. we got back in a previous step. There we go. And let's assign that to a variable uh, deserialized dog. There we go. And if we print out the deserialized dog, there we go. We deserialize them just fine. Yeah, now I wanna, now I'm a bit curious. What will it do if, so we provide a value for a get only property? What do we, will Newton's of do if we provide a different value? Like uh, meow. So my dog has turned into a cat. Okay. Getter is still a getter. It's not doing crazy stuff. That's that's good to know actually. Uh, but this is basically how I write code nowadays. Uh, when I'm writing code, when I'm writing unit tests, even I drop to my REPL a lot when I'm doing uh, nitty gritty things that I'm not a hundred percent sure about. So for example, when I'm doing uh, date calculations or working with uh, numerical values, and I'm not sure if like division will round it the number or truncate it and throw away details the REPL is a really good place to just send some code to and evaluate it really quickly it's an even shorter feedback loop than unit tests so it's a great way for fast feedback so to recap today i showed you c-sharp interactive uh, that comes with visual studio and it's uh, an instance of a REPL REPL was the read eval print loop and it's a generic thing that's available for almost any language. I've first seen it in Lisp, I think, but I've used it in Haskell, F Sharp, C Sharp. It's in, available for all languages, even J JavaScript. Note is basically the JavaScript REPL. Uh, what does it allow you or enable you to do? It enables a much more interactive development experience. So unit tests are great. Unit tests are a very fast feedback mechanism, but REPL beats it. So you can write some code, you can try out do and evaluate the results, then you can play around, write some more code, uh, and it maintains state. So it's really great for this interactive uh, feedback loop. But uh, it's not a replacement for things like unit tests, but because it's a really uh, an exploratory and a throwaway kind of way of working with code. Whatever you do in a REPL is never saved in a C-sharp file or uh, whatever. So you will still need to write unit tests. Uh, but this is what C Sharp Interactive can mean for you. I hope you learned something today and I hope you try it out. Thank you for watching.